Installing and uninstalling Python on Linux is pretty weird for some reason. There's no obvious way to uninstall a Python distribution once you've installed it. And if you use the repositories, um, like the apt repository or the Pacman repository or whatever, well, I can't speak for the Pacman one personally, but at least for apt and maybe some others as well, the latest version of Python on the repositories isn't particularly up to date. Uh, I do know you can use the Dead Snakes PPA, but even that's not super up to date all the time. And it's just weird and annoying and it can kind of wire itself in even if you already have a, a version of python installed that other version can then wire itself in to interoperability and then if you remove that it all breaks and it all gets a bit messy however there is an easier way to download and install python or any python version you want for any you know distribution you want and that is by using the ftp server so if we were to go on to you know, this web address here, www.python.org slash ftp slash python, we can see that all of these individual versions of Python are here waiting for us. And if we go into you know, version 3.9.9, for example, then we have, you know, all our exes, all our Mac installs, all our tar gzs and tar xz files and all that stuff. And this is what we're gonna actually access to download, build, and then install the source code for each individual Python version. So this means that when a Python update comes out, say for example, Python 3.10.7 came out recently, you can install that straight away without having to wait for the, uh, you know, the PPAs or the, the standard packages to update themselves. I don't actually know what the latest one in the app repository is, but I do know that for a really, really long time, whether it still is or not, it was really far behind. But either way, this would give you much faster access to those newer versions if you want it. Doing this manually, so you know, downloading Taji Z, extracting it, building, configuring, installing all that stuff, normally takes quite a few commands. However, you can simplify this using scripts. You don't have to build your own because I've already done that for you. I've been using this install script for quite a while now uh, myself and it's worked really well for me. And I thought I would share it with you and I thought I'd also include an uninstall script as well so you can quickly uninstall stuff. So if you want to install a patch version, for example, then you can do that. So we're gonna git clone uh, https github.com slash powerfox See uh, if I can spell my own username, that'd be nice. Uh, and then Python scripts. Now cloning there. And if we just cd into Python scripts real quick, you can see that we have our install Python, we have our uninstall Python, and then we have our you know license of readme. It is unlicensed. Um, I put the license in there just to say it's public domain, you can do what you want with it, I don't care. Um, I'm just not responsible if you go breaking your computers via modifications or anything like that. Just want to get that disclaimer out of the way before I get blamed for ruining people's computers. Uh, and then we can actually uh, make them executable by doing chmod uh, plus x install python and then chmod plus x uninstall python. So this will mean that we don't need to cd into the directory or we don't need to specify bash. Uh, we can literally just do install python and it'll work. However, right now that only works in this directory. If you want to make it work in any directory, you can come back out here, open up your relative RC file for your distribution. Uh, for me, it'd be, or it'd be for your terminal shell, not distribution actually. Uh, because this is a raw version of Ubuntu, it's bash, you might have a ZSH, ZSH RC if you want. Come down to the bottom and then do export path equals uh, dollar path colon uh, tilde slash python scripts. And this will add that to the path, and then we do source bash rc as well. Uh, that'll add it to the path. So now we can run our install and uninstall scripts from anywhere. So the install script uh, kind of takes Python versions like this. So you have 3.10.7, for example, would install Python version 3.10.7. Uh, you can install beta versions as well. So if you wanted um, the latest, I think the latest version of 3.11.0 is beta 5. You could do that and it will install uh, 3.11.0 beta 5. If you provide a Python version that doesn't exist, then it will complain and say that it doesn't exist. It also cannot automatically work out what the latest version of Python is. I have tried to figure out how to do that, but I can't seem to be able to work it out myself. Um, this is about as complicated as I've ever gotten with bash scripting. So if someone does know how to do it, then feel free to maybe contribute or add another script into the repository if you want. 
We're just going to install uh, Python 3.10.7 for now, and we're going to do WSL. And then I'm going to put this over to this side. I'm going to bring my thing over, and I'm going to show you how it works. So first off, it's... Oh, when my internet catches up, there we go. Uh, first off, so it checks if you passed at least one Python version. Uh, did this? Okay, there we go. Oh, it's having to do some crazy update. I updated this specifically so this didn't have to happen. Oh, well, whatever. If it takes too long, we'll just skip past it. I can always edit it out. So first it, you know, updates the repository and upgrades everything just to make sure everything is up to date. Then it installs all of this stuff. So wget is so it can actually download the targz files. Uh, everything else is just so it can actually build it. Oh, what is going on here? Really? <laughs> Oh, no, it's working now. Okay, we're just gonna leave that. I don't know what's going on there, but it does seem to be working fine. Uh, hopefully it's also not too dis distracting on the side as well. I might darken that in the edit if it is too much. Um, <clears throat> then it changes into our temp directory. Then it has to work out what version of Python to install. And it needs to do a little bit of weirdness with it because say we wanted to install a release candidate version for example if we did if we went into 3.9.2 folder here 3.9.2 rc1 is here but it's in a folder called 3.9.2 so basically it just needs to work out what folder to use and what um you know what actual sp a specific targz file it needs once it's worked that out it then goes and downloads it and then checks to see if it actually downloaded anything and if it didn't then it just exits out then if it did download something, then it extracts it using the tar file format. Then it builds it. So I think we've already gone part. Yeah, there we go. Uh, building Python 3.7 up here. Um, so uh, it CDs into our file and then configures it with all these different things. Uh, and then it actually makes it using all of your processes. And then after that, it just installs it. So as I said before, the main uh, benefit of doing this is that you don't have to wait around for the package managers to update themselves. You can just download whatever Python version you want, whenever you want. You can even download a legacy version if you want to. The only issue is that the actual installation time does take a lot longer <laughs> because the ones on the package managers are probably pre-compiled. So it just needs to download something and then install it. With this, it actually just needs to build everything. It needs to run all the tests. And then once it's done all that, it then needs to then install it separately, which in itself doesn't take too long. Um, but you can install as many Python versions as you want in one go. Normally when I'm setting up a new WSL, I'll install you know, the latest beta version, the latest stable version, and maybe one other version all at the same time, and I just leave it to go. But yeah, while it's running all its tests, I am going to cut here, and we'll catch up with it once it's done, and we'll make sure that it all works perfectly fine. One thing I will actually mention before we get there, uh, just interjecting myself here, is that for Python versions 3.7.x and down, I think, uh, these tests take significantly longer. There are like 400 and something tests instead of 44. So you're gonna be waiting a lot longer for those earlier versions to install as well. So that's maybe something to keep in mind. Um, but then I don't really know if you can install them outside of maybe Docker or something, so. Who knows? Okay, the tests are now done. It's rebuilding with profile guided optimizations, so it then has to rebuild everything. And there we go, it's all done. You get this huge, when it's installing, you get this enormous just flood of messages that come through. I don't even know where the install echo is, to be honest. I try to suppress the output as much as possible, but it doesn't matter how many flags I put in, it still outputs a load of stuff. Like this dash S is supposed to be a silent, this dash Q is supposed to be a quiet, it doesn't work. I don't know. If anyone has any answers to that, do let me know because it's kind of infuriating. But now, if we were to run Python 3.10, we have Python 3.10.7 installed. How cool is that? And you can use it and you can do whatever you, you want with it. And it's all well and good. And it doesn't interfere with the pre-built uh, version or the pre-installed version, which I think is 3.8.10 on this particular uh, WSL Ubuntu install. So what happens when Python 3.10.8 comes out and you want to uninstall 3.10.7 and get 3.10.8? Well this is where the uninstall Python script comes in. So this one is a lot more brute force, it does the same check as before, uh, it makes sure that you want to uninstall all the versions you want to uninstall and it, it can take multiple of them as well, it does the same thing. 
uh, and then it just removes all the files uh, <laughs> that Python is in for that particular version. So I went through and I looked through them all to see what the, uh, what was there and these are the ones I found. If there are any other ones, I don't know about them. I'm pretty sure they don't exist. You know, I did where is commands and stuff like that and this is all that came up. So it just goes through, deletes all the directories and all the files of Python version you want to uninstall. So simply you can do uninstall Python 3.10 it will then warn you about it. You're about to uninstall the following Python versions 3.10. This action is irreversible. Are you sure you want to continue with it? Yes. And then it's done. It's a lot quicker than installing it. Destruction is so much faster than building. Uh, but now if we run Python 3.10, it doesn't work anymore. We just get an error saying no such file or directory. And now you can go and install, you know, whatever other version of Python 3.10 you want. Now I should say, you may have noticed that we haven't supplied, you know, 0.7 here. Uh, that's because the files themselves are stored as, you know, like Python 3.10, PyDoc 3.10, PIP 3.10, um, things like that. Maybe should really have showed that off, to be honest. Um, I might try and get a, a, a screenshot of my, of my Debian one to kind of show that off. But it doesn't store these in different patch versions. And this is why you're not supposed to install multiple patch versions at the same minor version of Python because it may or may not cause problems. I don't know, I've never actually tried to do it, so I don't know what happens. But if you do have multiple minor versions, or multiple patch versions, sorry, of Python installed, and you won't want to uninstall one of them, then you have to uninstall all the others as well. It's just the way it goes with this uninstall, just because of the way that Python organizes its directories. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, if you have any other you know, ideas for scripts that you want to do, feel free to contribute to this repository. It's brand new. I said I've been using the install Python script for a while. I just moved it into a new repo uh, for the sake of this video and for the sake of having the uninstall one in there. So if you do like it, then maybe give the project a star as well. And maybe like the video and subscribe if you want to see more things like it. If you do have any ideas about what you want me to do in the future, then do comment them down below. I read every single one, so it'd be good to hear your feedback. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in two ways. One, by using the join button to become a member, and two, by using the link in the description to become a patron. One pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video, where I don't remember what we're doing, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. So I'll see you for that.